Hi, my name is Tom Harm. I'm one of the guidance counselors here at Johnsburg High School. Um, my counterpart is Kim Alt. Um, her, she works with the kids A through K, and I work through with the uh, last names L through Z. Um, just wanted to give you some good information um, about uh, what to expect junior year and then going into senior year for your kids. Um, one of the best ways to uh, for students to make sure that they are getting good information is to make sure that they're part of the Google Classroom and these are the classroom codes below. If uh, they're not able to access the Google Classroom, make sure that they email Ms. Alder or myself and we can add them. The junior, junior classroom code itself is below. Uh, at some point, if you'd like to cut and paste that um, link down below, you can uh, possibly join that yourself as a parent. Um, so there's a lot of really good information for that Google Classroom. So check that out. Uh, college timeline order. Um, this is These are the things that uh, need to be done if you are considering going to either a two-year or a four-year college um, for your child after high school. Um, and we're going to go through some of this stuff in this presentation. Uh, so from this point, um, August uh, until August of senior year, um, basically the, the big things that uh, kids need to be doing in families, they need to come up with a list of three to five colleges. Uh, we recommend that they look at a dream school, um, the one that they really want get to get into, and then also a safety school, um, one that maybe isn't as competitive. Um, it could be a two-year college, but it also could be a four-year school that just isn't as competitive as, a, as their dream school. Um, and then a financially safe uh, option, depending on um, what you get for financial aid. So, um, and we do re I know, highly recommend that uh, all kids take a look at um, the great option of MCC. Um, it's close by and it's definitely affordable. And uh, it's, it's a really good school as well. So. Um, many students uh, fill out the Common App um, if they're looking at four-year four universities, um, and that will open August 1st um, uh, of next year for seniors uh, next year. So how do you generate the list of different colleges? Um, the next couple slides will show you a couple different examples of where places you can look. Um, we really recommend that students um, and parents use Naviance. It's, an, it's a program that Johnsburg is now using um, for a lot of different reasons, but uh, Naviance is, uh, provides a real seamless um, interface for students to and parents to research different colleges. So um, that would be our first go-to, but these are other ones that you can take a look at, um, as well as uh, these other links here. Um, another one I want to show you that's, um, and this is similar to Naviance, um, but uh, it's pretty simple to use is College Greenlight. Um, I'm going to attempt to show an example of this here. So this is an example of Northern's uh, website on College Greenlight. A um, couple of things that you want to take a look at would be the quick facts area. Um, th this is a, a great way to actually uh, look at schools side by side and um, see what which one might be a good fit for your family and their situation. Um, as you can see, there's many, many tabs on the side over here that you can take a look at that will you can really dive a lot deeper into um, the college itself to see if it would be a good fit uh, for your son or daughter. Um, now through the end of August, um, we want you to uh, make sure that you visit the college websites. Um, for example, for NIU, um, it'll show you the gra graduation requirements, GPA, class rank. Here's a good example of that. Um, so uh, most colleges, um, you're going to need to have four years of, of English, three years of math, two years of science. Um, uh, two years of so three years of science, two years of social studies, and then um, foreign language is always the, kind of the kicker. Uh, some require two years of a foreign language or or fine art, um, others don't. Uh, but that really that's why it's important that you do your research uh, to see what schools what the uh, admission requirements are for different uh, universities. 
Um, college visits, uh, you know, you want to set those up to the admissions offices at the different colleges. Um, so just call or, or email uh, admissions counselors at the different colleges. Um, there are also a lot of virtual to, uh, tours now on college websites um, that can be um, very helpful, especially if it's uh, quite a distance from, from Johnsburg. Um, there are preview days where uh, colleges will um, have students come in and uh, as well as parents and, and give them tours. Um, and then there's also college fairs. Um, we do host a college fair in the spring at Johnsburg. Um, and typically we have between 60, 60 and 70 colleges that come to, um, and we set, they set up in the gym and, and students can go and talk to different college recruiters. Um, it's a great, uh, great opportunity for them to connect with different colleges right here in Johnsburg. Um, so as you're looking at college entrance, uh, GPA obviously is, is very important. Um, we go on a 4.0 weighted GPA scale. Um, GPA is only updated after every semester. So, uh, it, you know, students need to make sure that they are, you know, doing their best work um, and increasing their GPA um, to the best of their ability. Um, so the GPA will go on at the end of this year, we'll go on the applications in the fall. So um, when a student's done with their junior year, um, in in June, for example, uh, they'll have their GPA set for college um, applications. So at that point, they uh, they'll use their their transcript uh, th with the first three years of college uh, to or uh, first three years of high school, excuse me, to apply to college. Um, class rank is looked at some by some universities; um, others don't look at that, uh, but um, you know, if a student get, can get to the top 10% of their class, that's, it's a really nice benchmark. If they don't make it there, that's, you know, obviously that's okay. Um, but many, uh, of the top scholarships are looking for the top 10%, um, in the class, which typically we have around 150 students per class at Johnsburg. Um, so it'd be the first, you know, 15 or so students with the top GPAs. We do, um, SAT is the, is the, um, most um, used uh, uh, test that that Illinois uses at this point. Um, we do give the SAT here at Johnsburg um, for free in the spring, um, but there are other times that students can take the SAT. Um, in the current situation with COVID, um, many of these these dates are have been postponed, um, so. Uh, we, we, we do recommend that juniors don't really necessarily start taking a look at um, taking the SAT until the spring. Um, and hopefully we will be giving the uh, spring SAT um, here at Johnsburg. Um, ways to, uh, for students to increase their uh, knowledge and uh, scores for the SAT would be uh, Khan Academy is a great uh, resource. It's free um, and it's in individualized. Uh, for students to um, to study for the SAT. So uh, we really recommend that students uh, try to build into their week some time to um, study for or to use Khan Academy to help um, brush up on different areas of the SAT that they might, uh, or subjects that they might be lacking. Um, we do, we have had in the past uh, different trainings. Um, ZAPS is another SAT training that uh, it's a, it's a one day training, um, usually on a Saturday in February here at Johnsburg. Um, we'll be looking into doing that again this year. We'll have to see if that's possible. Um, so April, <clears throat> the April SAT, as I mentioned before, um, we will be getting on the 13th of April. Um, it, there is no cost, but it is required for a diploma in Illinois to get, to take an SAT. Um, Students don't have to register, but they will need to create an account. We'll help them do that here at the school. Um, we do we do recommend that students take more than one SAT or ACT um, in the past. Now, there's a lot of colleges that are starting to go test blind um, or test optional uh, based on the COVID situation. 
And I would imagine that that's probably going to continue into um, the post COVID era as well. So um, the SAT and ACT scores are important, um, but they are probably not as critical um, as they were uh, pre COVID era. Um, so we'll just have to see how that all shakes out. Um, again, ACT is the equivalent of the SAT. They're very similar tests these days. Um, juniors can sign up for an ACT as well. Um, some students say they like the, the ACT format a little bit better than SAT. Others like the SAT better. It's just kind of a, um, a, a preference on, on what they do, but um, colleges will accept either the SAT or the ACT scores if they require them for different purposes. <clears throat> so um, now looking into senior year, um, just to start planning ahead, obviously, um, you know, during the junior year, students need to apply, or, or they need to think about the schools they want to apply to. Then starting in August, um, they need to start applying of their senior year to the different schools that they've looked at. Um, most applications are online. Uh, just take a look at the college websites, um, and usually the applications are not too hard to do. Um, many applications have fees. Um, however, if you are a family that is on the free and reduced lunch um, list, you can get waivers, uh, so you don't have to pay the application fees. You can get those from the schools, or uh, Ms. Alder or myself can give you um, possible waivers, uh, not only for the application process, but also for uh, SAT and ACT exams. Um, early applications increase the chances of admission for, and scholarship money. So we always recommend that um, by their senior year, students apply to the schools that they really want to get into by November 1st, um, as that's usually the deadline for a lot of more selective schools uh, for scholarships. Um, but many schools will take applications all year long. Um, a couple things just to note, um, there is something called early decision for, for some colleges. Early decision is a, um, is a way of applying where you can only apply to one university. Um, and it's usually, it's a legally binding agreement between you and the university. So, um, be very careful if you're going to choose early decision, uh, it's, it can be a benefit if it's a very, very selective school um, because sometimes they, then they know that the student's going to be attending, um, but you do not know how much financial aid you're going to be getting when you sign that early decision agreement. agreement. So um, you need to be prepared to pay uh, whatever the college is asking, um, you know, without knowing what your financial aid is. So just be careful if you're going to choose early decision. Um, uh, Continue to the college visits, um, attend college fairs. We do have college reps that come into the, to, uh, Johnsburg. Um, there's a lot of virtual uh, rep visits, uh, you know, being done at this point. So um, there's there's a, a lot of really good ways where students can connect with um, college representatives. Uh, so just, um, but they but they have to obviously take the initiative to do that. Um, Continue to research more, more colleges between August and November. Um, and, mis and then uh, admissions decisions will come in the mail or uh, by email um, to students uh, based on uh, when the colleges start to um, pass those out. Usually that's going to be early to mid-December that students will start to see those admission decisions um, if they apply in, in, uh, by November 1st. Um, then August through May, um, scholarships. So senior year, that's when students are going to be applying for scholarships. Um, most scholarships uh, come, money comes from the directly from the college that the student will be attending. Even like MCC, MCC's got yeah, almost a hundred scholarships that they have available to students. Um, you know, most schools have uh, numerous scholarships that they can provide uh, to students. They just have to apply for them. Um, Admissions offices at each school can let you know if there are additional scholarships. So again, we we would recommend that you work hand in hand with your missions officers. Let them know your situation. They can point you in the direction 
of different scholarships that might pertain to um, your family situation. Uh, the guidance and CRCC, CRCC um, website, uh, we do post a lot of uh, local scholarships that students um, can apply for. Um, and that will usually begin um, in late February through, um, through April. So uh, we do encourage seniors and senior parents to take a look at the CCRC website and look at the updated scholarships um, because there's, there's some really good money out there for students. Um, and usually not a lot of kids apply for those. So uh, the chances of getting a scholarship at Johnsburg are usually pretty good. Uh, you can subscribe to scholarship websites um, and uh, to see the financial aid results. Um, these are some examples of some different um, websites you might consider looking at for scholarships. Um, again, uh, there's a lot of really good scholarships on these. Uh, the downside is that these are national scholarships typically, and you're going to have a lot of people applying for these. Um, but you never know, um, something might hit and, you know, five or 10 minutes worth of work could be a couple thousand or a couple hundred dollars and it's definitely worth it. So we encourage students and parents to, um, to drill down and take a look at different scholarships that might be applicable to, uh, the, the student situation. Athletic scholarships. Um, if you have a, a student, um, that is thinking about playing, um, sports at the collegiate level um, is very important if they're looking at a D1, D2, or even D3 situation for NCAA that they sign up with the Eligibility Center. Um, uh, the website's there, uh, so make sure you do that. Talk to Ms. Alt and myself as well if you are in that situation because we want to make sure that your student is in all the correct classes um, and that they would be admissible in, uh, into those programs. Uh, if your student is looking at a uh, NAIA type of school, is a smaller school, um, they also have a website that um, uh, you can you need to register for um, if they're looking at uh, smaller colleges and universities. Financial aid is always a big topic, obviously with with college. Um, financial aid is federally and state funded money. Um, grants, loans, scholarships, and work study are all examples of financial aid. Um, if, if your student is going to uh, college um, and, well, it's actually a graduation requirement at this point, but um, it is something that senior year um, on October 1st or after, uh, all seniors and their parents need to fill out uh, the FAFSA form. Um, the high school does give uh, different um, seminars on how to fill out the FAFSA. Um, it's not just not too bad to do, uh, but you just have to make sure you have all your documents ready. Um, and then it shouldn't, the, the process shouldn't take too long. Um, but, uh, we do, again, we do have assistance for families to fill out the FAFSA if you've never done it before, um, and learn more about that. Um, the FAFSA uses prior tax information that's actually downloadable from the IRS. Um, so that, that makes things a little bit easier. Um, each college student, um, who has been admitted will, will have to fill out the FAFSA. Um, so that if you do have one, more than one, uh, student in college, you'll have to fill out a FAFSA for each student that's going to be going to college. All right. Um, and then October through May of there's, of the senior year, after you see the FAFSA results, then you can choose the college. Um, it is, that's one of the reasons why we do ask you to fill out between three and five applications. So then you can really see, um, which school is going to be in the price range that you can afford. Um, so you'll have options. Um, so, uh, May 1st is when you actually have to make the decision on where you're going to be going to college. So some, some colleges will say, okay, well, you need to make your decision earlier than that. Um, unless it's a very selective school. Um, that you're looking at early decision. Um, you really don't have to decide where you're going to commit to go to college until May 1st. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, you want to keep, make sure you have all the scholarship information available to you first. Senior parent nights um, in the fall, we, we do have a lot of um, senior parent nights and videos that you can watch that are, that are very helpful. In September, we will have financial aid 
uh, nights. Um, and then in September and, uh, and in October, we'll also have FAFSA completion nights where, uh, where parents can either virtually or come into the school to, to uh, fill out the FAFSA. So if you have any questions um, from this presentation, uh, we really encourage you to reach out to Ms. Alder or myself. Um, and thank you for, the, for your time.